Thank you, thank you, Tarek. That was uh, it's quite a hype, man. Um, Rockstar, I, I don't know about that, but uh, okay. Anyway, so uh, right, so I, I I'll be telling you tonight about Coda. Um, Coda, uh, you might wonder, what is that? Well, let's find out. Um, oh, sorry. Before I go any further, if you love, see, has anyone seen me give this talk in some form or another before? Okay, I, I, I don't want to disappoint these people who have already seen it. I'll try and make things a little bit more interesting or, or new or something, but for the most of you, it's new, so that's good. Okay, so yeah, what, what is Coda? Uh, so Coda is a new cryptocurrency protocol. Um, it's the first cryptocurrency that has what, what we call a succinct blockchain. Um, and what is a succinct blockchain? Well, it's a blockchain uh, which is small and easy to verify. So uh, in particular, for Coda, the whole blockchain is essentially this, just about a kilobyte, um, regardless of how many transactions happen or uh, you know uh, how you know basically how many people are using it. Um, so what's you know what's the cool thing about this? It makes it possible to have a blockchain which is scalable while still being secure and having very decentralized verification. Uh, in particular, the verification is so cheap that you can do it even on a mobile phone. You download this little proof; it's a kilobyte, and you check it in about 10 milliseconds ish. Uh, and that's just as good as you know if you were running a full node, and you can do that on a phone or even in a web browser, as we'll see. So uh, let's you know talk about cryptocurrency uh, for a moment. Um, this is the usual setup of cryptocurrency, well as uh, rendered by uh, me. Um, you you have here the, a database, okay, and you have some people who are uh, managing the database, who are mm, modifying the database, or maybe even just looking at the database. Uh, who are these people? Well, you know, they're either miners or they're full nodes. So people who are either uh, adding transactions or modifying this database or who are uh, aware of this database and, and aware of its history. Um, and then on the other hand, you have people who are end users who are typically themselves not full nodes or, or not miners. Um, and they're sort of delegating trust to, the, to these people who are inter interacting directly with the database. Uh, so, you know, uh, right. Okay, so let's, uh, let me say it in a little bit more structured way. Uh, what I'll call transaction processors, these could be miners, these could be stakers. They apply transactions to this database. Full nodes are, are watching, that's like, this, say this person over here is a full node, okay? They're not uh, so greedy, not so evil, they're maybe just a person. Um, they're just kind of watching what's going on and, and they can really see if, they're, if the, the processors are doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, you have these end users, the majority of which just delegate trust to either the processors uh, or the full nodes, while they themselves do no checking. So uh, you know, th this, this isn't a great state of affairs because, uh, as you can see, the, the processors are, you know, they're, they're usually either, well, greedy or maybe even evil. Um, so it you know, raises the question, why, what's the deal? Why can't everyone be a full node? Well, Probably most of you know, but let's uh, let's see why. So, how does it usually go for a full node? Okay, well, you know, on day one, it's a genesis block. You're happy. It's it's a very small blockchain. You check the whole thing. It's very good. But you know what happens is you you, you wait a second, and the blockchain grows. Right? It's a it's a chain of blocks. Okay. What's it, what what do you expect? So, uh, you wake up one day. It's super long. You're like, oh, you know, oh crap. What am I going to do? Well, I, I guess I'll have to verify this. I am a full node after all. And you go and you go and you go and you know at the end you're there and and, and at the end you're very old and I, I guess you verified the blockchain but I don't know was it worth it probably not so <laughs> that's why most people are not full nodes right the resource requirements are, are, are very large uh, and and they only get get worse good worse over time so you know as anyone who's tried to run a full node on a computer uh, can attest. It's, it's such a pain in the butt to run on your computer, and it's, it's completely out of reach for running on a mobile phone. And so what do you do? You delegate trust to third parties. So either a full node, uh, that's like in, in, in the case of like an online wallet, uh, Coinbase, something like that, uh, or maybe to miners in the, in the case of like clients. Um, so you know, how, how do we get around this? Well, what we need is some way to be convinced of the current state without seeing the history of that state. OK, does it make sense? Yeah. Right? Makes sense? Who thinks it makes sense? 
OK. Great. Right, so you know, the, the root of this problem is, is just how a verification mechanism works in a typical cryptocurrency. How does it work? Who, who knows how it works? Probably most people here. Yeah? Huh? You look at the history, right? So you, so, so, uh, you, you want to know, uh, someone sends, sends you some money, you want to know, does this person have this money? What do you do? You look at the history, right? It's like every time someone tried to send, send you a dollar, uh, you had to check the entire history of that dollar. So, you know, uh, someone tries to pay you, you say, oh, yes, well, you know, they got it from their job as a cashier, and, well, yeah, th uh, that, the customer got it, uh, I don't know, from returning something at the store, and, well, that person got it, you know, from their boss, and they got it from, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure who this is. Huh? Who is it? Was it? Okay, I'm not sure. They got it from some, I don't know, somehow, and, uh, that person got it because they are the manager of a fast food store and, and so on and so on. Uh, you don't want to know that. That makes no sense. It, it really doesn't. I mean, when, when you tell, <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone else has had this experience of, telling some, of explaining to someone how cryptocurrency works and they say, like, that makes no sense. And really, it makes no sense. Why should you have to see the entire history? Well, okay, so let's think about a solution. Well. Uh, what we would like is some way of uh, certifying that someone else had already checked the state for us. Okay, like some kind of certificate. But, uh, you know, you could think of it as an, as an analogy. Maybe you wanted to invest in a business, but you don't want to look through their whole financial history yourself. What do you do? You, maybe you, you get an auditor to do it for you and produce some, some kind of audited financial statement. And this is a much easier thing to check than uh, checking their finances yourself. Okay, th this isn't really a perfect analogy because What's wrong with this? Well, this is sort of like dele delegating trust, really, to someone else and having them check it for you. So we don't, we don't want to do that. But it turns out there's this amazing thing, which is called a ZK snark. And this is a kind of unforgeable certificate. So it's a certificate that requires no, no real delegation of trust. As I said, it's an amazing cryptographic primitive. And what they are is a, basically a certificate to prove that you ran some computation correctly. OK? So uh, the cool thing about them, there are three cool things. One is that they're tiny. OK, so they're actually less than a kilobyte. They're very easy to check. As I said, uh, just a few milliseconds. Uh, and they're very versatile. So you can use them to certify any computation, any computation that you like. Totally, they're a universal uh, technique. And uh, please note, Snarks are tiny and easy, easy to check, regardless of how complicated the computation was. So to give you a, a sense of, of things, this could be a computation that took a thousand years to perform, a thousand years. And at the end, you could produce this certificate uh, to be assured of the result of the computation, even though you haven't been around for a thousand years, you have no idea what kind of hardware the computer was running on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You could still have some confidence that the computation was run correctly. Now, uh, maybe a thousand years, maybe that's really a bit far-fetched because probably quantum computers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, who knows? But this gives you a sense of, of, of what I'm talking about here. It's tiny and easy to check regardless of how long the computation takes. So how can this be used in Coda? Well, you know, updating a blockchain, those things that those evil gray people were, were doing, that's just a computation, right? Those are programs. Snarks, as I just said, <laughs> if you believe me, can certify any computation. So what can we do? Well, we could have pr processors produce snarks that which certify that they're actually updating the blockchain correctly. So they're really checking the signatures. They're really checking the account balance. They're really subtracting the account balance correctly, the nonce, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then. Instead of end users checking the blockchain themselves, well, they can just check the certificate, OK? Make sense? Why not? And remember, the certificate is tiny and easy to check. So instead of having to download the super long blockchain, they just download this one kilobyte thing, and they check in the 10 milliseconds, and you're good to go. So what does it mean? It means you get basically a full node level of security while only downloading a, a few kilobytes, OK? So let's uh, you know, investigate a little bit more. What exactly is the SNARKitecture, as, as we say? Um, 
what would be one attempt is to use just one snark for each block. So you have the processor, and they produce a snark while updating the database of accounts. Okay? This processor uh, is thinking about something. Uh, maybe you could guess what it is. Okay, so this is the completed certificate. What does it say? It says the database of accounts started in state one. I did some stuff, and I did it, I did it correctly. And then at the end, it was, it was in state two. Okay, so as I said, it says basically, I know a block, which when correctly applied to database one, results in database two. Okay, so that's what this certificate says. It's a proof of that fact. Or simply, just for ease of language, so I don't have to keep saying a long sentence, you can get from DB1 to DB2. That's how I'll say it, because I'll say, be saying that a lot, so I just want to say it like that. It's a snark, so this is just a kilobyte. Okay, so what happens for the end user in this world? Well, the end user checks the certificate, saying you can get from DB1 to DB2. And actually, this is DB1. Who knows what it's a Merkle tree? Okay, so uh, basically this DB1 is really the Merkle root of, of the whole tr database of accounts, okay? And so uh, they, also, they also get, in addition to the certificate, they get a Merkle path into that da database too to, to get their account balance and it says you have 17 codas and uh, that's how they check their balance. Well, okay, so that's cool. They can be assured of their balance without having to see the diff between database one and database two which you know, would be fine if they already believed that database one was the kind of current state of things, but what if they didn't know that database one was the, the previous state, in a sense? You with me? Do people see what I mean? Well, okay, well, you can kind of imagine that you can train these certificates together. So, you know, if you have, a, uh, let's say, ge the de genesis database of accounts is database zero, right? So you have one certificate that says database, you can get from DB zero to DB one, you have one that says you can get from DB1 to DB2. You have another that says you can get from DB2 to DB3. You have one that says you can get from DB3 to DB4, and they all check out. Well, you can, you know, then you can know that, in fact, you can get from uh, DB0 to DB4, right? Right. So uh, it's almost like a blockchain, but instead of including the transactions or, or whatever in the blocks, you just use a sequence of snarks. And, and this would be a big win if the sequence of snarks was smaller than uh, 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 then the sequence of blocks. Yeah, what's up? So is that like just getting the header chain of the block? Getting the, the headers of the whole blockchain? It would be as if you were just getting the headers, but also, uh, also really checking the validity of all the transactions without having to see them. OK. So, uh, but it, this doesn't solve the problem uh, of, of linear growth, right? So the, the blockchain is still growing linearly with time. Eventually, you're, you know, even if these snarks are small, you'll still be under a pile of them. So attempt two, this is what a code actually does, is to use one snark for the whole blockchain. OK, well, how are you going to do that? Well, this is the really crazy idea. Uh, it goes back to, uh, I, I think the first instance is this paper of Valiant. It's 2008 or something like that. It was his PG thesis. It's pretty cool. I, I would read it. It's funny. He has this thousand-year computation example um, in the introduction. This is the idea of recursive composition. So, Checking a snark, well, okay, that's computation, right? And what did we say? Snarks can certify any computation. So the checking of a snark can itself be certified with a snark. Does that make sense? If I tell you, oh, I checked all these snarks and they were all good, I could get one big snark that kind of certifies all of that, that whole checking process. So what it means is that we can chain multiple snarks together to get one snark that stands in for all of them. Cool? So let's see a, a little bit more uh, I would say in detail, but it will just be with pictures. So let's see with pictures. So we have this one snark. It says you can get from DB1 to DB2. We run our snark checker. It says thumbs up. We have this other one. It says you can get from DB1 to DB2. Oh, sorry, did I say that before? I meant you can get from 0 to 1. We have this other one. It says you can get from 1 to 2. We also run our checker on that. It says, yep, that looks good to me. So we can snarkify this whole checking of both of them. Right? And we get this one snark that says, yeah, I know a snark that says you can get from zero to some intermediate state. And I know another snark that says you can get from that other intermediate state to state two. OK? And they both, and they both verify. So you get one snark that stands in for both of these. And it's a snark, so it's still a kilobyte and it still takes 10 milliseconds to check. 
So now, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to do it again. We have one that says you can get from db0 to 2 now. We did it again, let's say. And now we have one that says you can get from db2 to db4. Again, we, you know, we check both of these. Thumbs up, thumbs up. And then we snarkify that whole situation again. OK? So now we have, again, just one snark that says you can get from 0 to 4. And it's standing in for the computation of, basically, you know, I saw a snark that got from 0 to 2, and that one saw a snark that got, goes from 0 to some intermediate state. And, you know, you see what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's like, I know two people, they check two people, they check two people, and so on. Does it make sense? It's, it's kind of funny when you think about it that way, I think. Like, it, it kind of also makes, makes sense, right? Like, oh, there were two people, and I checked them, and they checked two people, and so on. I mean, I guess that's, I said it last time, but it's true. That's, I guess, how large organizations work, and even, in a sense, even uh, societies in general. I mean, how many people do you talk to, right? What's up? That's it. It's, all, all it says is there was a bundle uh, of blocks that got you from state 0 to state 4. Because all, all you really, you don't necessarily care about the history, right? You, you just care, uh, you know, what is my current balance and, well, some other information perhaps as well uh, for consensus and, uh, and for checking which transactions were sent and so on. But there, there are sort of, those are sort of details that. So, sorry? There's no, uh, yes, in, in a sense, the, the snark is sort of maximally uh, uncompressible because it's a zero knowledge proof. So uh, th there's really no way to, to reverse uh, the process. You, you get no information besides the fact that there is some sequence of transactions going from zero to four. So, okay, so let's break it down. You know, what does the end, u end user do in Coda? They download this basically one kilobyte blockchain snark that says, you know, you can reach uh, state four from the genesis state. And again, they get this Merkle path. Uh, I said tw 20 kilobytes. I should have updated these slides. It's actually like two kilobytes. I don't know why I thought it was 20. It's not a big deal, obviously. But um, they, get, they get a 22-ish kilobyte Merkle path um, to get their account info. Uh, oops. And, and yeah, that's it. They check the Merkle path. Uh, you know, they check the snark. That's like checking the whole blockchain. And you're happy, and, and, and uh, you know you go and you, you spend your 17 codas. So, uh, what's the upshot? As I kind of just mentioned, the coda wallet you can sync basically instantly to a full node level of security with uh, just a very small amount of data. Um, from a scalability standpoint, this is a huge win because you know often people talk about scalability; they, they talk about increasing throughput. But of course, this only makes verification more impossible. You know, uh, if you imagine thousands of transactions per second, it's like terabytes of data every week. Uh, is that right? Yeah, terabytes of data every week that you need to, to verify if you actually want to uh, check the blockchain. Most people can't keep up with that torrent of data, and this delegation problem, uh, you know, just, just grows. So, uh, you know, l let me end by chatting a bit about uh, what our progress has been as an organization, as, as a project. Um, we started a, about 18 months ago. Um, uh, since then, you know, th there's obviously been a lot of activity. Um, in March of this year, we released Snarky, which I, if people are interested in zero knowledge proofs, programming with zero knowledge proofs, I really recommend that you check out. It's a, a programming language implemented as a DSL in OCaml uh, for working with zero knowledge proofs. I think, you know, I, I've used the alternative things. I think it's better. I also wrote it, but um, so if you want to work with ZK Snarks, I think it's a, a really good way to do so. And if you really want, seriously want to do something, I actually encourage you to contact me, um, uh, and I, I can even help you. Um, uh, let's see. Then in April, we released our white paper. In June, we grew our full-time engineering team to about seven, seven people. Now I think we're 10, 10 engineering and maybe four uh, other roles. And, um, uh, September, we released our first steps in network. October, we open sourced all of our code, which uh, you know, brings me to what's, what's going on now. Uh, you know, we're shooting for quarter one of 2019 to have a feature complete uh, test network running. Um, we'll be growing our, our development and product teams further. Uh, and there will be a bunch of ongoing efforts as, as we enter like, the, the final testing period before main network. So we'll have 
bug bounty programs, security audits, we're, we're developing a wallet and other applications on top of Coda. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of ways to get involved. As I mentioned, you know, we do all of our development in the open on GitHub. Um, it's fun. You can come comment on issues and talk about crypto and stuff. Uh, uh, you can chat. We do also uh, all, all our chat on the open uh, in Discord. You can join the development chat if you're into obscure things that are happening in our code base and uh, chatting about OCaml and stuff. And um, follow us on Twitter. So. Uh, I know I probably raced through that. What's the time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. One second. So, oh yeah, I guess we're doing questions now. So, do do do. Uh, okay, cool. I guess I'm done. Um, do uh, do other people have questions? I, I just before I answer your question, I want to get a sense of how many questions there are. Okay, I'm gonna choose randomly. Will someone say a number? Five. Okay. Uh, okay, it's a good enough number. Uh, yeah, you. Oh yes. So, uh, uh, in in what sense? So we we use a proof of stake variant of Ouroboros. Um, uh, you know. Just as checking transactions is a computation, checking the consensus rules is also a computation. There's only a very small amount of state which is needed for consensus. It's something like, you know, uh, Ouroboros is very complicated. So if you say something like proof of, proof of work, it's basically how much work is in this chain, and you know what was the last timestamp, and uh, what's the difficulty, right? Uh, so you certify that you're updating all of that information correctly as well with a snark. Does it make sense? Ouroboros is more complicated, but. Oh. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh. Also a version in the code of oh yeah. Oh yes. Wow. Okay, that's so embarrassing. I just yeah. The, I will copy it out of there uh, into the into the snarky repo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. That one, yeah, that one's up to date and definitely there's a, a lot that happened since I guess. Yeah. Oh, one second. I, oh yeah. What's uh, so. I don't. I'm not sure I understand. Okay, Does anyone? We have a chain oh yeah. Of, of blocks, yeah. And the transactions change after you get your your stuff. So how, how, how do you mean? it changes? No, I'm asking. How, what is the time difference between when you actually get the time set from the start to when you set? Because it's stale, right? Or maybe I'm missing something. Can anyone interpret? I'm sorry. Um. Okay. So you've got a blockchain. It's got the each block. Has you get the Z snark that matches the, the state. You're saying for your transaction? Yeah, so, so the transaction, so transaction changes. Yeah, so oh, 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 oh. Like you're, you're saying when someone adds a block to the, to the blockchain? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the ah, okay, right. So, uh, right. So someone sends me a transaction, I'm waiting for them to, I, I'm waiting for that transaction to get included in the blockchain. Right. The, the, the snark before is safe. Yeah, right. So the, the cool thing is the recursive composition makes it possible to incrementally update the other the old snark. So there was a snark that said, you know, you could get to to the to the, the last previous state and then you can, you know, add a new block on top of that and uh, include it into the into the into the previous and that's snark. Coming from the so oh, who's responsible for producing that snark? It's the block proposer. So the staker. So you, basically you win a block, you're responsible in addition to you know, telling everyone what the new transactions you're including are, producing the new proof that that certifies the current state. Questions? Yeah. So you use snarks, it implies you have a trusted setup, right? Mm -hmm. Why should I trust you? And why is it possible to use a snarks instead? I guess I would say uh, 
yeah, I, I wouldn't, maybe you shouldn't trust me. I mean, I, I think I'm a trustworthy person, but yes, I don't know you. So, uh, but, uh, you know, at this point, the Zcash team has done really an amazing job of making it possible to run a really scalable setup with, you know, the last, the sapling setup, they had, uh, I think, 70 or, some, or so participants, at which point, I mean, I, I don't know. For me, it's, it's hard to believe that, that all of those people who are all running the software in, in all really crazy, you know, upside down in a plane, airplane kind of ways, that all of them would be compromised and colluding. So at that point, to me, the trust setup becomes not so much a security issue as, as just like a logistical issue. It, it might be possible. Uh, there are technical reasons for which recursive composition is particularly efficient uh, for, uh, for SNARKs. Um, it, it would be a, sort of a research problem. Yeah. If I understand correctly that um, a full node, a full node still need linear memory to remember all the data yeah, so uh, linear in the number of accounts. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so could you go back? Sure, yeah. Uh, you had one, I just wanted to be clear, like for the mobile flatly. So in that case, uh, what is the mobile downloads to the top block and then the the pass to the account, right? Uh, yeah, that, that's basically right. What, yeah. what does it actually verify? So you download this proof. What this proof says is there exists a blockchain such that uh, you know if you take that blockchain, run through it, check all the transactions, uh, aggregate all of the all of the account, all of the transactions together, you'll get a database of accounts with Merkle root, you know, four, uh, and that's what it says. But it could be any blockchain. Ah, so, well, you know, you, you do it the same way that uh, if there are multiple, if people are telling you about multiple blockchains, you, you do it as you always do, you pick, well, uh, basically the longest or strong, strongest sort of chain. So there's a chain selection rule in the case of some ambiguity. Well, like a mobile wallet doesn't do that. But the snark does it. The snark, the snark is, is saying basically uh, there is a blockchain, you know, let me say it in the case of proof of work because it's sort of simpler to talk about. Um, there is a blockchain, you know, after, after seeing it, you would be convinced that the total, uh, you know, hash power in that chain, the total strength of that chain was S, and the database of accounts after seeing all the transactions in that chain had Merkle root H. And so you see, if you see two chains, two proofs, this one has, uh, you know, strength 100, this one has strength 105, you go with this one. And, and this proof is sort of a, a compressed version of ha having seen the entire chain, in a sense. It's not really compression in, in the sense that it's irreversible, but uh, it's, it's sort of as good as compression because all you were going to do was look at it, check it anyway, and just, and just figure out what the strength was and what, what the account balances were. Yeah, so I, 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 maybe I was chatting with someone earlier about that. So I, I, I think the, there are basically two major differences. One is uh, the mimble wimble technique is basically like a, it's kind of like that attempt number one that I showed. So it's, a, it's, it's like a linear reduction uh, in the amount of, sorry, a constant factor reduction in the amount of uh, space required. It still grows linearly with time. Um, so that's one difference from Coda. It's, Coda is you know, just always one kilobyte. And the other difference uh, is Mimblewimble is very particular to payments. So it's not, something, it's not a technique that you could generalize to more general kinds of computation, smart contracts, that sort of thing. Coda, you know, right now we've only implemented the, uh, the payments version of the protocol, but we are planning on adding more general smart contract or computational functionality um, as we move forward. Oh, a long time. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 
let me say this, it's a long time. Uh, the, the cost of producing one of the proofs is sort of baked in, in a sense, the transaction fee. The number of proofs that you need to create is proportional to the number of transactions. Uh, if, it, if it costs some amount to make a proof, you, you charge that much in the fee. Um, and uh, as you saw with the kind of tree structure, you can do all these proofs in parallel. So the total time for you know, snarking two to the n transactions is logarithmic in n. So yeah, so so it, it's a bit funny. Um, the the exact way that that it works, it's possible to have it's possible to have a short block time regardless of, of how long it takes to do one one of these snarks. There's some kind of buffering uh, sort of thing, thing that you can do. Uh, it, it'll probably be around 30 seconds ish. Hopefully, maybe, maybe shorter. Well, yeah, you, 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 have to, you have to use these really special, really crappy curves for, to do the efficient recursive composition. Um, but, yeah. What's up? Okay, uh, so if you spent that green amount there, does that get replaced like, by a null value or something? So, yeah, so the way that it works is uh, Coda is like account-based. So if you spend some money, like six Codas or whatever, then, you know, the next time your, your account would be modified and the Merkle root would be the Merkle root of the tree, but with your account being replaced by the account that had uh, 11 instead of, instead of 17. What's up? Uh, hmm. Sorry if you've already gone over this, but is there a distinction between a full node and a non-full node? Do the full node store the UTXO? Yeah, we haven't, I, I think, worked out exactly what the nomenclature should be, because it's, it's a little different from your, from your usual setup. But uh, I, I guess usually I think about the nodes who are uh, keeping track of the entire state and the nodes who are just looking at proofs. Um, and uh, the nodes who are keeping track of the entire state, that's probably going to be, well, either someone who has some pressing reason to do so, maybe, a, maybe an exchange or something like that, or someone who's a block proposer, so like a staker. Um, if you're just someone who's interested in you know, looking at parts of the state, there's no need for you to keep the entire set of balances. Does it make sense? Uh, yeah, I guess I was wondering how the, when you do go to verify your account, you have this Merkle path that happened to what? Like somebody else oh. stored that. Yes, yes, yes. So, so the, the people who are proposing blocks are, are storing the entire, the entire state. Right. So when you go to check your account, I guess you just, there's some hash of the, the whole thing and then you, you can verify yes. this path efficiently so yeah. without having to get the whole UTXO set. Yep, yeah, so you, you have this proof which says there is a block, sh it's, it's actually account based, it's not UTXO, but, but you can do it with UTXO too. Uh, basically you would say, there is a, let's talk about UTXO if you like, there is a blockchain, uh, you know, of such and such a length, uh, such that if you had seen all the transactions in that chain, you would believe that the UTXO, the UTXO set has Merkle root H, and then you just get a, Mer a Merkle path into, into H, okay? You've been waiting a little longer, yeah. Uh, can you comment a little bit on why your team chose to proof state versus global warming? Oh, sure, I'd love to. Uh, look, uh, global warming is uh, <laughs> the most, you know, one of the scariest and most pressing problems of uh, our time. And to throw more coal on the fire to me at this point would be uh, morally reprehensible. I don't know. I, 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 actually, actually, it turns out as a side effect that that's also true. So, I, if you don't have Bitcoin hash, yeah, I, I, it, 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 it seems very likely that for you know coins which are not the biggest proof of work coin, proof of work is probably not not a very secure option. Uh, you'll get killed by something with more hash power unless you do some obscure hash function. You know that's only good on CPU, but even then, I mean, there's the, this another CPU coin that's better than you, and so. What's up? I think I'm a little bit confused how the whole schema works. Okay. I try to explain how it works and put it just say my character or not. So where where is the block block proposers? So where some like dedicated computers, whatever systems, which has enough memory and enough space to have copy of all account set. Exactly. And when someone's and, and let's say there's a bullet and also bullet has like this uh dedicated account of like I make some up and I send like to you some kind of like a uh, coin and I calculate, well, I basically 
sinus terms are kind of ascended to a full node. And this full node will relate a star, a star to stars, and basically a big group, right? And after that, I can ask this, uh, like later, let's say, the same full node, and ask the this, say, like, how much money do I have in my account and generate me this uh, merge plot? And I can verify. But how I can understand, like, so there's a different set of machines which keeps only like a loop, only like a kind of your snark. So is it only full bonds? So I'm going to give me this like a short uh, snarks, which I want to trust what is indeed the most recent snark, I can verify the market uh, belongs to it. Or there is a more broader set among full consensus that reach what is the current uh, snark. Like, how, no. how do you call this current snark? Like blockchain snark? Blockchain snark, yeah. So, like, what, what, what is it? What, who, who decides what is the most recent version? Uh, the stakers, so people who are uh, so full nodes uh, slash like block proposers, really. Yeah. But full nodes and block proposers. Okay, so full nodes and block proposers really, really yeah. keep the whole transaction history or like at least accounts. Accounts, yeah. So regardless. Yep. So benefits is it's only to verify the transaction that happened for mobile wallets. Uh, f so, well, for, for anyone who doesn't want to keep the, the entire state. Yeah, but I know you don't keep entire states. So in Bitcoin, you keep like only headers. Or, 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 or yeah, right. Which is like 32 megabytes. But right, so if you you're... Also have to, you also have to download the if, 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 if you're just keeping headers, that's, that's sort of delegating trust to the, to the miners, right? So if, if you're just keeping headers, you know, the miners are writing, uh, here's what the, uh, the UTXO set is, commitment, 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 and then you get your Merkle path into that, but I mean, they can put whatever they want there, right? No, like, suppose that I'm half going to verify what the most recent... Uh, maybe, maybe we should have this I don't, I, I don't want to... Maybe we should have this conversation after. Yeah. No, I, I oh. think it's a really interesting conversation which goes to the root of maybe everybody's kind of, you know, trying to understand where is the kind of, you know, um, benefit. And, and it really sounds like we still have uh, two, two classes of citizens, you know, privileged citizens who have enough, uh, you know, compute power and can store the entire history. And clients who do benefit because they, they have this, you know, reversing snacks and it's very easy, etc. But the benefits are only on the client side, right? That's right, yeah. Right. So, 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 so I'm not quite kind of, you know, uh, comfortable with, with having two classes uh, of citizens again. Is it possible actually uh, not to keep the, the history and keep all this nice? Uh, Somehow we can still be able to propose uh, the, the new block? So it's, it's actually, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, there is actually some kind of impossibility result about cryptographic accumulators. I can't remember what paper it's in. Uh, I need to, I, I can ask someone and, and let you know, which somehow says actually uh, you, you, you can't get that. So, so I, yeah, so there, it, it turns out either you need to have an amount of state which is sort of growing linearly with time uh, or, uh, or you need to sort of constantly be online and constantly be getting updates and sort of updating your, your local state. Um, uh, yeah. But it is, I mean, it is better for also sort of like the, the people, the consensus nodes, because in Bitcoin you have to, you know, if you want to be fully verified, you have to download the entire blockchain, including the history that's no longer relevant to the current state. So the longer that goes on, the bigger yeah. that crop is worth. Yeah, so. it, it depends on the, what you're comparing to. So because, it's, you know, there are other systems where you, you have only one class of systems, for example. So that's Okay. Uh, Can you please go just a couple of slides back and repeat how you do this discussion? If, if, if we have sure, sure, sure. Uh, so maybe would this be what you're thinking here or, or in this case? Yeah, for, from the beginning of how we explain the recursion. All right. Yeah. So you have this one proof which says you can get from state zero to state one. Another which says you can get from state one to state two. Yeah. <laughs> is it one transaction or is it full block of transactions? Uh, it could be either. Uh, right now it's just one transaction in the implementation, I can tell you. Okay. So, um, 
Yep, and both these snarks verify. You know, you can run the verification algorithm and it, they both return true. Well, uh, you can summarize that whole state of affairs with another snark, which says, I know two snarks, each of which verify. This one says you can get from zero to some intermediate state, and this one says you can get from that same intermediate state to, 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 to two. Does it make sense? Should I say more? No. Oh, okay, okay. It means like every change of states will be a really change of a blockchain uh, right. So the actual the way that the architecture actually works, there's sort of uh, you you sort of delay the inclusion into the ultimate blockchain snark for some time. But yeah, anyway, it's maybe a bit out of scope for this talk. It's a, there's, there's another term to talk about. Describes exactly how it works. You have to apply, right? This, this, this presentation. Yes, yes. The, yeah, if you go on our website, if you go to codeprotocol.com, um, you can see the version of this that I gave, uh, like an SF blockchain week, maybe, or uh, I think that's online. Or somewhere else, anyway. Anyway. Have you given much thought to uh, support for layer two protocols? Uh, you know, to be honest, uh, We've really been kind of focusing on, on the core functionality right now. It's something that I think is definitely uh, worthwhile. I think, I think uh, you know, layer two protocols give you probably a good constant factor improvement uh, over the, the base blockchain, so something <laughs> worth investigating, but yeah. Sorry. What's up? You go over how uh, a smart contract work in this setting. So say you and I would mind their smart contract. How exactly would you do it? Uh, well, okay. Uh, the short answer, you know, SNARKs can certify any computation, so. <laughs> is, is it similar to like the way script was uh, script for Bitcoin, uh, where you, I guess you have to reveal the miner or the. There, I, I, I guess it's it's, it's 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 hard to say. I mean, there. There are many conceivable architectures. One could be actually kind of like scriptless scripts in, in Bitcoin. Sometimes in Zcash, if you go and uh, if you talk to Zcash people, they will sometimes call this like pay to verification key. Um, that's one way of doing it. Um, there are other ways of doing it. There's like kind of virtual machine approach, which is Synarchs can certify any computation. In particular, they can certify the computation of some virtual machine, uh, and you know you run that VM inside of a Snark. It's the same thing. Sorry? So you can even have state? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, right now in code, the state is basically the database of accounts, but it could be anything. What's up? That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, as, as I say, uh, if the consensus protocol is based on uh, the wasting of electricity, no, I, no, no, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, I, I don't think proof of stake is great. I, I, I think proof of stake is okay. Uh, it still kind of sucks, like, you know, okay, the, the people with the most money win. Uh, I, I, don't know how, I don't know how one feels about that. Uh, certainly, to me, it's better than, than you know, uh, throwing more coal on the fire, as I said. Um, if there were something better, I'd be very happy to think about using it. So, you, so, so uh, would it fair to say that uh, when you see a uh, reasonably good implementation, reasonably mature implementation of the implementation of the consensus protocol, uh, you, you are ready to switch with uh, 
Progress. Well, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, let's get to the main net first, and then maybe we can, we can talk, <laughs> talk about it. Final question? Oh, yeah, let's do that. It's similar to the smart contracts question. Uh, how feasible would um, anonymous machine the transactions be? That you could totally do. Uh, it, it, the, it would, the most straightforward thing that I can think of uh, would be to do, like, confidential transactions, a la, I don't know, pick your favorite implementation, you know, G to the X or whatever, um, with range proofs. You could totally do that. Um, I didn't think about Zcash or Zerocash. Or but I think you could do that too, maybe. It, it, that's, that's a little trickier because the state just grows forever, so it's kind of like, oh. but, but you, could, you could still do it. Okay. All right, thank you.